Here's your wrestling news for February 18th, 2021. And your headlines for today include reason why WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns will not compete in the Elimination Chamber. Jim Ross calls Kenny Omega WWE Champion during AEW Dynamite. Drew McIntyre reacts. Sting gets laid out with massive powerbomb on AEW Dynamite, gets medical attention backstage, update on his situation revealed. AEW books exploding barbed wire deathmatch for world title at Revolution Pay-Per-View. Renee Paquette reacts. Pro wrestler caused issues for Disney security after refusing to take off mask. Pro wrestling legend spotted in crowd at AEW Dynamite. Vince McMahon gives a standing ovation to a wrestler backstage after his match. Jim Cornette was caught smashing cars and windows. Seth Rollins' new WWE entrance music is on the way. Reacts to Reigns as a heel. WWE fired superstar for weight issues. Stephanie McMahon was attacked with a baseball at WWE show and more. We're kicking off today with the Elimination Chamber, and this Sunday's show will see a huge chamber match with a universal title opportunity on the line. The winner of the SmackDown Chamber match will face Roman Reigns on the same night, a strange booking decision considering that the Tribal Chief is no stranger to the match. We previously reported that Reigns was booked for the match, but was taken out because the company wanted something different to the WWE Championship Chamber match, but that's not the only reason for the change. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer explained, It's a way to get heat on Reigns. Originally, Reigns was going to be in the chamber match, that was the original idea, and then I guess they didn't want to do it on both shows or something. Now, Raw and SmackDown's chamber matches will be slightly different, and given that the Tribal Chief will be fresh when he faces the winner of the SmackDown match at the pay-per-view, and fans can expect a decisive victory from Roman Reigns. AEW News Now and this week's show was a packed event, but perhaps Jim Ross thought he was commentating on Raw or SmackDown. During the show, JR referred to Kenny Omega as the WWE Champion, and although we are confident Omega would make a great WWE Champion, he's definitely not the holder of that particular title. You can listen to the botch now. Alex Marvez may have been there as well for the WWE Champion Kenny Omega. Fans were quick to mock and criticize JR for the botch, with some calling it an insult to the AEW world title, though JR did have his share of supporters. In a tweet, JR apologized for the mistake, saying it was due to the heat of the battle on live TV. And to be fair, there's still plenty of fans who call it the WWF over 18 years since Vince McMahon's company changed its name. The actual WWE champion Drew McIntyre weighed in on the matter, poking fun at the situation by saying, the WWE World Champion Drew McIntyre is not amused. Although JR is considered the greatest commentator of all time, this botch is just the latest in a series of mistakes made during his time in AEW, though he's never name-dropped the other company before. And what do you make of JR's commentary? Let us know in the comments. From one legend to another as Sting was laid out on this week's AEW Dynamite with a massive powerbomb. Confronting Taz ahead of the Sting and Darby Allin vs. Team Taz match at Revolution, Sting was laid out by the massive Brian Cage in what was a very real bump for the 61-year-old legend. It was later reported that Sting suffered a slight niggle, which was muscle catch after the powerbomb, and receiving medical attention backstage, he seems to be okay now. Though the street fight at Revolution is likely to be a cinematic match, there was no hiding the painful bump the Stinger took this week on AEW Dynamite. More from AEW as a huge world title match has been added to the Revolution pay-per-view on March 7th. After it was revealed that Jon Moxley had a rematch clause in his contract, AEW World Champion Kenny Omega chose the stipulation and revealed that the two will face off on March 7th in an exploding barbed wire death match. We've got no idea how AEW plans on pulling this match off, but one person who will be watching closely is Renee Paquette. On Twitter, Mrs. Moxley had a very interesting reaction to the super dangerous gimmick her husband will be competing in, repeating word for word that this will be an exploding, barbed wire, death match. Renee wasn't a fan of Moxley's unsanctioned match against Omega, and hopefully there'll be some safety measures for both Omega and the father of Renee's unborn child. 
We're looking at Disney next as Disney Plus is set to debut a new wrestling-themed show starring Blue Demon Jr., but the masked legend hasn't made things easy. This week, executive producers of Ultraviolet and Blue Demon, Dan Levy and Eugenio Villamar, spoke to Wrestling Inc. and revealed how the tradition of Lucha Libre wrestlers caused some problems. They explained, The first thing they needed to understand, which was difficult to explain, is that Blue doesn't take the mask off. Even to get him into the meetings at Disney, they don't get to see his face. There was a problem with security and how to get him in. Fortunately, Blue Demon Jr. was allowed in and kept his face covered, and fans will be able to see plenty more of him and his impact on pop culture when Ultraviolet and Blue Demon releases on Disney+. Back to AEW and whilst Dynamite wasn't a good night for Jim Ross, a different wrestling legend had a great time at Daly's Place. In the crowd for last week's Dynamite, Dory Funk Jr. was there to watch the action unfold, and he had a great view of the show. On commentary, Cody Rhodes referred to the legend as AEW's special guest for the night, and we hope that a man who trained countless wrestlers enjoyed his time watching AEW Live. Back to WWE, and we all know that Cesaro is tough, especially after his head was busted open just a few weeks ago and he continued to wrestle. Four years ago at No Mercy 2017, fans saw how tough the Swiss Superman is as he and Sheamus faced Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins for the Raw Tag Team titles, and a botch saw Cesaro's two front teeth jammed up four millimeters into his gums. A serious incident that later required surgery, Cesaro continued the match and received a standing ovation for his efforts. That's according to former superstar Matt Morgan who spoke on the Wrestling Inc. podcast, and it was revealed that Vince McMahon was the first to stand and others followed. Vince McMahon may have given Cesaro a standing ovation, but he won't be working with AEW anytime soon, despite what Tony Khan wants. We reported earlier this week that Khan is more than happy to have a WWE-AEW partnership, similar to what's going on right now between AEW and the NWA, Impact, and New Japan. On Twitter, Khan once again tried to persuade the WWE chairman, saying he's begging McMahon to come meet him in Jacksonville. We very much doubt that McMahon will take Khan up on the offer, as for now, the so-called forbidden door will remain closed on this potential partnership. There's few bigger names in the past 20 years than John Cena and Randy Orton, but long before they were headlining WrestleManias, the pair were in OVW and being booked by Jim Cornette. It's no secret that Cornette has a temper when things don't go his way, and in his Talk is Jericho podcast, Nick Dinsmore, aka Eugene, spoke of the first time Cena and Orton main evented together. The story goes that this was the first time the pair would be headlining OVW TV, and the match went over by 2 minutes and 17 seconds, something that didn't sit well with Cornette. He explained, Corny is like, God damn, 2 minutes and 17 seconds? gets his baseball bat, and starts beating the windows in the building down from us, hitting his car. Randy just left when he came back. Yeah, every now and then, Cornette's frustrations came out. Despite going over by a whole 137 seconds, Orton and Cena have gone on to have incredible careers in WWE. And whilst the Viper is currently being haunted by Alexa Bliss, at least the demonic superstar isn't as scary as a baseball-wielding Jim Cornette. Smackdown next as Seth Rollins returned to the blue brand last week, using his old entrance music. Though it was hinted that the self-proclaimed messiah had changed his ways, that isn't the case, but he will be changing his theme. Speaking on WWE's The Bump, Rollins said his old theme doesn't really go well with his current character, and teased that a third theme may be here very soon. Since splitting from the Shield, Rollins has used Burn It Down and his Messiah theme last year, and with Roman Reigns also saying he'll be getting a new theme soon, the WWE's music team is very busy right now. Speaking of the Tribal Chief, Reigns has been unstoppable since returning to WWE in the summer of 2020, and he's even impressed his former Shield ally. In the same interview with The Bump, Rollins had nothing but praise for the Universal Champion, saying, Absolutely killing the game. He's doing incredible things as the head of the table, the Universal Champion, representing SmackDown as good as he can. It's really an incredible thing to watch someone really take hold of their own belief system of their own career. It's been a very long time since fans saw Reigns and Rollins on the same page, and although Jon Moxley is doing big things in AEW, a potential Shield reunion could be in the works for the former Tag Team Champions. If you've ever tried to lose weight, you'll know that dropping pounds is easier said than done, but at least your job wasn't on the line because of it. 
That wasn't the case for Nick Dinsmore, as this week, the former Eugene spoke about his return to WWE in 2009, and how it was his physical shape that cost him a full-time return. Speaking on the Talk is Jericho podcast, Dinsmore said he was re-signed to WWE and wrestled at live events, but that his look let him down. He said, I came back, and apparently they'd seen me two months earlier. I must have gotten heat. Either I'd got so much into bad shape, or the mind was turned. But they were like, we're not selling fat old Eugene, you're fired. Eugene's last WWE match happened on the August 10th, 2009 edition of Raw, where he lost a contract on a pole match to the Calgary Kid. As Eugene explained, I wasn't scheduled to be on the road. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, hey, can you come to Calgary? Contract on a pole match. Because of his weight, Eugene was booked to lose the match to the kid, who unmasked post-match and revealed himself to be the recently fired in storyline, Miz. In the years since, Eugene hasn't returned to WWE, but given that Nick Dinsmore retired in 2019, he was clearly in good enough shape to go for another decade, despite what WWE believed. More from AEW and after Sting's arrival in the company, it was established that he will be wrestling, and is set to team with Darby Allin against Brian Cage and Ricky Starks at Revolution. Cody Rhodes is certainly excited for this match to happen, and while speaking to the New York Post, put out the challenge, saying, I want the opportunity to stand across from the Stinger, and I think he knows that. If there's somebody I wanted to beat, it's the face of TNT's hottest period. Sting was the face of WCW until its demise in March 2001, and though we don't know how many matches the icon will do, Cody Rhodes is first in line to face the Stinger after Revolution. For the past year, WWE hasn't had to deal with rowdy fans causing issues throughout the show, but that wasn't always the case. During the latest episode of The Kurt Angle Show, The Olympian spoke about his first stint with WWE and said that during that time, a fan stole his gold medal, but that wasn't the worst thing to happen that night. As Kurt explained, I was going to call the police, and I called Vince McMahon instead because earlier that night during the show, Stephanie McMahon walked out down the ramp and someone threw a baseball at her, and Vince McMahon went to security and said, you find the SOB that did that. I don't care how much money it takes, you tell fans you keep offering money until they say yes. Kurt added that money wasn't a factor to the boss, saying, $100, you know if they don't want to do it for 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. So security was going around asking the fans and they weren't going to tell and they ended up doing a really high number and one of the fans said, he did it. So I was thinking in my mind, Vince could do this for me right now. Kurt did get his medal back, though there's sadly been various instances in the past of fans assaulting wrestlers and personalities at the show. This always ends badly for the fan who's decided to attack the wrestler, and although they've had their issues in the past on screen, it's heartwarming in a very Vince McMahon way that the chairman was willing to spend as much as possible to get revenge for his baby girl. And we're ending today with Kyle O'Reilly, who suffered some very real injuries during NXT. Stretchered out of the venue, Alexa Blanning, who posted several photos of the incident, said that O'Reilly was KO'd when he collided with the steel steps, and those in attendance said it appeared to be a seizure. In an update from Wrestling Inc., it's been reported that O'Reilly was just selling the beatdown he received, and whilst we're pleased to hear he's okay, he certainly had a lot of people worried. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.